Hey everybody, it's Derek Kumar from CodeOpinion.com. A collaborative environment where many users are working concurrently can be difficult to realize you're not working with consistent data, especially with the popularity of microservices. I'll explain with a small code sample and how defining boundaries is key to consistency. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design. So if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. If at any point you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. So to explain how we're not dealing with consistent data, so let's take the example of placing an order. So we have our client code that's calling our, a command to our order system. And what our order needs to do when we're actually writing this code is that we know our logic is that we need to reach out to the warehouse, make a query to the warehouse to figure out, okay, for the product that you wanna order, do we actually even have enough quantity on hand, for example? If we don't, then we don't wanna actually place the order. If that's successful, then we need to reach out to the catalog for the product that you're ordering so that we can get the price to add it to our sales order. So that's kind of the process of when we're writing our code for that command for placing order, that's what we logically think we need to do. So to illustrate that in code, what I have is a quick order command and a particular handler for it, where what we're doing is exactly what I illustrated is we're using our warehouse service that we're injecting. We're getting to the quantity on hand. If it's less or equals to zero, then we're gonna throw because we can't process our order at that point. We can't create the order. And then from there, if that's good, then we're gonna go get the price of, for that particular product, that SKU, uh, from our catalog service. And then we're gonna create our quick order from it and then save it. So what that code is not considering is that we have different clients, different users interacting with our system concurrently at the same time in a collaborative environment. And what I mean by collaborative is that there's kind of different angles, meaning that we have our, our one particular client that is creating an order and we had that code that was just going to the warehouse. But at that same time, you could have a completely different client, a part of the same application, be interacting with the catalog for a different reason. Maybe it's doing a uh, change the description or updating the images or the names of a product. And while we're also trying to create our order, we have a separate client that maybe it's interacting with the warehouse to do an inventory adjustment. So in a collaborative environment that's concurrent, when we're writing code like this, we're often not times thinking about the data that we're selecting is going to be immediately inconsistent the moment we fetch it of a part of our command of saving our order. So back to the code sample, again, when we call this warehouse service to get the quantity on hand, that's at a point in time of what the quantity is gonna be. The same thing with the price. If we go and fetch out the price so that we can add it to our order, and at the same time, there's another user doing some change to what that particular price is for that product that somebody's ordering, then what they think they're ordering it for and what the price actually is, because they're happening concurrently, could actually be a mismatch. And then we're not actually getting the order uh, placed for the price that they think they are. So does this matter that we're using inconsistent data? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. You kind of need to ask the business on what type of risk we're willing to take to not have this consistency. Again, if you're making queries and don't have any type of isolation, you're gonna be using inconsistent data. But does it matter? That's for you to decide. If you decide it is an issue and you need consistency, well, it depends if you're in a monolith. If you are and you have a single database schema that you're working with, you can have all your interactions uh, be a part of the same transaction, but the right type of transaction. You need specific isolation though that you're not gonna be getting dirty reads when you make those separate queries to the warehouse or to the catalog. Meaning that when you have your transaction, your order's making its request to the database, the warehouse is making the same request with the same connection, all a part of the same transaction. And especially, again, making sure that you're using a transaction, depending on the type of database that you're using, that has the right level of isolation. So what that looks like in code, now is we're starting a transaction with a serializable isolation level to basically prevent any other updates occurring from the data that we're selecting so we don't get any dirty reads. And then we can pass that transaction to our uh, warehouse service to get the quantity on hand, to get the price, so that we will have consistency across all the different tables that we're working with, not just the ones we're writing to, but the ones we're reading from as well. So a monkey wrench thrown into the whole mix is if you're not using a single database, or if you're using microservices architecture where you have each service has its own database. Well, you can't have a single transaction spanning multiple services, so what do you do? Well, I think a lot of that stems from the idea of thinking about entities as services. And to illustrate this, this is a post from Reddit from a couple of years ago, where the person was asking, this is my simple data model. I'm creating microservices for these tables. 
what's the best approach? Do I create a microservice per table? And my answer is no, because you're thinking about the wrong thing. Rather than thinking about having uh, services around entities, really you want services around behaviors, capabilities, and then from there realize the data behind those capabilities. So what I mean by that a little bit more is when we were thinking about that code where we were actually getting the price from a catalog service is why, do the, why does the price belong in the catalog service? Probably because we were thinking about entities rather than behavior. Does the price really belong to a catalog service? Or rather, does it belong alongside sales that actually is the thing, the service that actually needs the price? And then when we're thinking about the warehouse, the spinoff of this is we were trying to get the quantity on hand. But in reality, and I realize this is a simple example, but in reality, the, you don't actually need the quantity on hand because there's other business functions within something like a warehouse called available to promise. I marked it as ATP here, which is really a business function about understanding what you think the quantity on hand will be at any given time. And that comes from what you think you actually have in the warehouse. Because again, what's actually in the warehouse isn't, it's actually, the, if we're talking about physical goods, it's actually physical goods on the shelf that actually count, not what the number says in your system. Plus what you've purchased, what orders have been placed but haven't been shipped out yet. So that's the concept of ATP, and that also would live in sales. So again, shifting from thinking about tables or entities as being what your services are, but thinking about what are the capabilities that you need to provide, and then behind that, what's the data that you need that should be living within a service. If you do this, especially if you're moving price and ATP to sales, now we don't have a dependency on the catalog or the warehouse. So what that might look like in code is we have a transaction with still with the correct isolation level to guarantee that we have consistency between our reads and our writes. And then we're using that transaction to get the sales product out for our particular SKU. And what we can do there now is we can call our sales product to actually create the quick order for us. And what this is doing is it's removing one quantity from our available to promise. And then it's calling our factory method on our quick order that actually does the validation to make sure that we actually have some available to promise um, quantity greater than zero. If that's good, then we just return our quick order. So from there, what we can do is we can save our quick order, a part of that transaction, and also save our sales product because we've decreased our available to promise. All within the same transaction, all within the same boundary or the same service. Consistency can be a difficult thing to think about when you're writing code for a multi-user concurrent collaborative environment. Just because you're using transactions with whatever database you're using, doesn't mean you're gonna have consistency between your reads and your writes. If you're in a microservices architecture or any architecture that has multiple different databases per service and you don't have a distributed transaction, which you probably don't have a distributed transaction, do you need consistency? Realize that the moment you call another service to get data, that you need a part of some operation that you're using a part of business logic, it's not gonna be consistent. So how do you wanna deal with it? One solution is to start looking at your boundaries. If you really need to couple to another service to query for data, maybe it shouldn't have that data to begin with. Maybe that data should be owned by the service that actually needs it, a part of business logic. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to please leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.